iOS 14 just came out. Everyone's been sharing their new home screen setups on Twitter. I thought it would be a perfect time to update everyone with what's on my iPhone. It's been a while since I posted one of these and I've made a few changes and tweaks since then. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. Uh, starting off with the home screen. Uh, if you've noticed, a lot of people are sharing their custom icon layouts. Uh, I actually did some testing with this. You can actually do it through the Shortcuts app on iOS. The problem is though, it's going to open the Shortcuts app every time you want to get to whatever app you're clicking on. I tested this out and it just really slowed things down and it also removes the ability to have notifications on those apps on the home screen. So it's always that battle between aesthetics and function. For me, function definitely took the lead on this one, but I still was able to do a few things to make it look nice. As you can see, I don't have the apps in the rows that they typically force you into. This is definitely the most frustrating part of iOS for me. I used to jailbreak a lot of my older iPhones and just kind of trailed off with it a few years back when they stopped having jailbreak updates. What I was able to do to achieve this home screen setup though was saving website bookmarks with black icons. I found this through a Google or Reddit search. I don't exactly remember. I'll be sure to put a link in the description for this if you want to do the same. But I have, uh, I'll go ahead and toggle into jiggle mode here. So I have a bunch of black icons that surround these eight. Makes it for a little more of a simpler design on the front. I wish I could get rid of the text under the app icons, but without jailbreaking or using those shortcuts, it is impossible. If you'll notice too, I don't have anything on the dock. There's normally that little bar across the bottom for the dock app icons. How I was able to get around this and hide that was through the actual wallpaper. Um, what I ended up doing is taking a screenshot on my phone and importing that screenshot into Adobe Illustrator. I did the little eyedropper color tool for the dock and I used pure black and I just set up a little gradient. So it looks a little more subtle and minimal, but you're able to completely hide that dock icon and you're able to completely blend in those black filler icons to get this look. Starting from the top, I have YouTube Studio. That's where you manage comments and videos uh, for anyone else that might be a YouTuber out there. And then I have YouTube, the regular app. Um, I watch a ton of YouTube, so definitely made the front page. And then the notes app. I use the notes app for writing my YouTube videos, for grocery lists, for just about everything. Definitely one of my most frequently used apps. From there, I have the Reddit stock app. I tried Apollo a few years back and I wasn't really a big fan. Let me know, maybe there's been some changes or anything, or if you have any other Reddit clients you would recommend. In the next row, I have Spotify and Pocket Casts. Spotify for music, Pocket Casts for podcasts, obviously. I know Spotify has built-in podcasts now, but I was never really a big fan of the UI, so decided to still stick with Pocket Casts. If you have any other recommendations for that, I would love to hear them as well. From there, we have the Stock Mail app and Safari. And then on the bottom, I have my phone and messages, really straightforward, obviously. Uh, swiping over to the left-hand side, I have a few different widgets here that are new with iOS 14. I have my calendar, weather, and maps. Um, these are all really nice. Having this has allowed me to remove that from my main home screen, which has been really nice. And so far, I've been um, adjusting well to kind of this new setup and really like it. And then uh, below that, I just have the Coinbase tickers. I like to keep track of my Litecoin. I'm still a big fan of cryptocurrency and uh, excited to see where it goes in the coming years. Swiping over from there, I have my new app library. Uh, suggestions, we'll skip over that. Uh, going straight into productivity and finance. I would also like to say, I have three emails here. I um, am an avid clearer of notifications. These popped up since I started recording, so apologies for that for anyone that has some uh, notification OCD like I do. I have a square appointments. That's where I manage all of my photography sessions for my pet photography business. I have the uh, Barclay app for my credit cards, calendar, 
Capital One app also for credit cards. Second row, I have Cash App, Chase, Coinbase, and Dropbox. Cash App, I have a lot of clients that like to pay with Venmo or Cash App. Nice to just have that on hand if that is their preferred payment method. Chase, manage my checking account. Coinbase, again, for the cryptocurrency. And Dropbox, that's where I store a lot of my client photo files and video files. It's also a really convenient way to deliver them. Third row, I have the Mac Files app. I don't use this very often, but it's really handy when I need it. it gives me access to my desktop if I'm not available. Next from there, I have my Wave invoicing app. Uh, Wave is where I bill all of my videography clients. So I use Square for photography appointments and Wave for my video business. Following that, I have Line 2. That is a secondary phone number service, kind of similar to Google Voice, but it's uh, 12 bucks a month and comes with a few extra features. I use that phone number for all my business dealings just so I don't have to give out my main phone number on the internet. Uh, and then I have the Stock Mail app, Notes. Printful is where I print all of my merch for my photography business. Uh, reminders, I use this pretty often for a bunch of stuff, nothing too exciting there. Robinhood for stock trading. I don't really have a ton of investments or anything, but it's been fun to play around with the last few months. Then I have the Shortcuts app. Like I said, I had been trying to set up those custom icons for the home screen, but it ended up just being too many hoops to jump through for the aesthetics. Uh, from there, Squarespace, I have all of my websites through Squarespace. Not a sponsor, but if you're watching this, let me know. Uh, Team Viewer, I have a uh, home theater computer with a media server set up to it. So that's how I access that if I need to. Also really great to access my main uh, editing computer if I'm away from home without my laptop. Then I have Venmo, again, just another form of payment if I have any clients. Moving on to the next category here, we have information and reading. Uh, the Reddit stock app, like we covered, stock weather app. Uh, this is the new iOS Translate app. Haven't gotten a chance to use or try that yet. And then Pocket Casts, which we already talked about on the home screen. Moving on to the social tab. FaceTime and Google Duo, uh, FaceTime for all of my iOS family, Google Duo for all of my Android family. Uh, Bing a few thousand miles away from most of your family, I end up doing a lot of video chatting, especially now in 2020. Uh, for social media apps, I have Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. I haven't been using Instagram much this year at all, and uh, Snapchat is pretty much just for my wife and I to send videos of our cat across the apartment. And uh, Twitter, I use Twitter probably more than anything right now, but still not very much. I'm not a big social media person, which is, uh, I know, a little bit ironic considering I make my living on YouTube. Next folder is creativity is what iOS calls it. Uh, this is all just my photo apps, essentially. Stock camera app, uh, Double Take is the app where you can film two different cameras at once from the 11 Pro. Then I have Filmic Pro, which is kind of that pro app for making videos on your phone. I definitely recommend it if anyone is making any better quality YouTube videos or something and still filming with your phone. And then the Imaging Edge mobile app is how you control the Sony cameras through your phone. Really, really nice and handy in a lot of situations. And then the Lightroom app, I don't use Lightroom to edit my photos too often on mobile. I'm usually importing them into my computer if I want, but in a pinch, it's really great if I'm out on a trip and wanna post something to Instagram. Uh, Stock Photos app, and then Unum, Unum, I don't know how to pronounce that. That's a way to organize and preview your Instagram grid. I was using this a lot in the past for my cat's Instagram page and my photography Instagram page. Like I said, I haven't been on there much this year, to be honest, so it hasn't seen much use lately. And then the YouTube Studio app that we already talked about. The next folder is Utilities. I have a 5.0 radio. It's just a police scanner app. I like listening to the police scanners around town if I'm hearing sirens or something outside of my apartment. Airport Utility. I am still using the old uh, Apple Airport router for my home network. I'm really hoping for a better solution at some point in the future, but it's still holding pretty strong for me. Then the Mac App Store, calculator, clock, compass, find my iPhone, measure, um, all really self-explanatory. 
Next one is Plex Dash though. Um, I am a Plex media server user and huge fan. Like I said, I have a home server computer with a bunch of media on there. That's how I manage that. It's a newer service for their Plex Pass members where you get to monitor the uh, stats of the computer and see who's watching what. I have a few family members um, back in Michigan that actually use and access my Plex server from time to time. So if there's any issues, I can pull it up here and check on it. Then I have Safari uh, settings. Citus Link is uh, the app to control the aperture lights. I'm the proud new owner of an Aperture 300X. That's my key light here. I'm gonna be doing a studio tour at some point in the near future. I've made some fun upgrades this year with uh, some client work I had going. Uh, moving on from there though, I have speed test. Great if you're in a new location uh, to just check the internet speeds when you're getting settled in if you're traveling. Voice memos and wallet, self-explanatory there. Entertainment, uh, music app. I don't use Apple Music, but I do have a lot of random MP3s from old bands I used to play with back when I was a touring musician. Uh, they're not things that are really available on any of the streaming services just because they were small local bands. So I like to keep that on there if I'm feeling nostalgic and wanna listen. Then I have Netflix. It's the only paid streaming service I have. Um, still enough content on there for me to justify it. My wife is also a really big fan and user of Netflix. Netflix. And then I have Next Episode, which is a way to manage upcoming TV show schedule releases. It's a free service, so check it out if you're someone that ditched cable a long time ago like I did and uh, want to still keep track of when new shows are coming out. Patreon. I have a Patreon page. Um, that's a great way to post and interact with all of you that support me. Thank you very much, by the way, for uh, all of the patrons watching this. Then I have Plex, I already talked about that. Uh, it's my home media server. It's really, really nice because it organizes all of your movies and TV shows, finds the metadata, and essentially sets up your own personal Netflix. Um, so it's really, really nice compared to just having you know, plain files in a computer hooked up to your TV. This lets me access and watch all of my media if I'm at home or away from my home network on any of my devices. Uh, Definitely check out Plex if you've never heard of it. And I have Spotify, Apple TV. Um, Apple TV, I have the free year subscription that they gave out when they announced it, and then the stock YouTube app. Moving on from there, I do have quite a few games on here. I don't play a ton of games, but I have the space for them on my phone, and they're all kind of tucked away in this folder, so it's a great way to be able to still have them when I'm in the mood to play something and uh, they're not really getting in my way otherwise. But a few of my favorites on here, Alto's Adventure is really awesome. Uh, big fan of the Kingdom Rush series. I Love Hugh is a really nice, pretty game. Mini Metro is awesome. Limbo is really awesome if you've never played that. Uh, Pocket City and Tiny Tower are both really great options. Let me know if you have any games you'd recommend. I feel like I've been a little stagnant in my mobile gaming the last few years. Moving into the travel section, I have Bird. Uh, that's a scooter app. Uh, really great to have just quick access to all the scooters that are out in town here. I also have Lime, Shared, and Spin. Uh, there's a pretty healthy mix of scooter brands in Portland. I haven't used any this year, but it's good to have when I need them, especially not having a car. Sometimes I'm going a few miles and it's just a little easier and faster to take a scooter compared to walking. Uh, Gaia GPS, this is a newer app for me. Um, really great for hiking trails and elevation and that sort of stuff. Uh, geocaching, really, really fun kind of global scavenger hunt sort of game. Um, I've been a geocacher for like 10 years now. It's super fun if you want a free active hobby. Uh, definitely check it out. Google Maps, again, really great for hiking. I use the stock Apple Maps app for most like normal 
city navigation, but if I'm looking at hiking trails or things like that, the uh, Google Maps app tends to do a little bit better. Also has been better in the past for cycling routes around town, but they did just incorporate that into the Apple Maps app. I haven't been cycling the last week or two, so I haven't tested it out personally. Then I have Hopper and Hotel Tonight are both kind of last minute hotel deal apps. Um, I've actually had a lot of really good luck with these in the past. There's been a few situations when I've been back home visiting where I needed to get a hotel room at the last second. Really great to find some last minute deals if you need them. Then I have Lyft. Um, I haven't used any Lyfts this year with everything going on, but good when I need it. Maps app and uh, Skip Lagged is another really great deal app for airline flights. You actually have the option to book some flights that aren't to your main destination, but you have a layover in your main destination. Sometimes going that route is actually cheaper than booking a regular flight. Um, they're starting to frown upon it more and more though, so I'm not sure how long that's gonna be lasting, but it's there for now. Uh, next category is health and fitness. Uh, this is a weight diary app. I've been tracking my weight since I lost all of my weight a few years back. It's a really great way to stay on top of things with minimal effort. So every morning when I wake up, I track my weight. Then I have the uh, Apple Health app and a meditation and breathing app called Oak. Oak is really awesome. I would definitely check it out if you're into that sort of stuff. Really great UI. Uh, it's made by Kevin Rose, a longtime idol of mine. And uh, last category is shopping and food. I just have the uh, Safeway app is my grocery store of choice. Tons of good coupons and stuff on there. And then I have the Yelp app, check reviews and restaurants and that sort of stuff. But that is it. Like I said, it's uh, not a very exciting setup, but it's definitely really functional. And I've been super happy with this clean layout for the front of my device. Just remove some of the distractions. Being able to hide all of those apps now in the app library is great. Finally caught up to Android from 10 years ago. <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear what you have on your phone. If you have any recommendations for me based on what you saw in my setup, I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.